Good evening and welcome to the glorious sunshine of beautiful Lime Bay. Thank you for joining me once again for our regular late night visit to the dusty studio archives of old time radio shows right here at my home on the south coast of the United Kingdom. I'm Brett, I'm your host for our nighttime podcast and welcome to another episode. Don't forget, please, I've got a Facebook page, Instagram page and a YouTube channel. They're all called Brett's Old Time Radio Show and it w- they're just waiting for you. And if you'd like to see some information and some photos and just some bits and pieces about where we live and where we're based and broadcasting from, you'll find it all there on our social media. Also, if you want to drop me a message, brett at tourdate.co.uk is where it's at. And I've launched a supporter page where you'll find lots of extra content and I'll tell you all about that shortly. But it's at patreon.com forward slash Brett's Old Time Radio Show. Time now for another episode of Steptoe and Son. This one is called Cuckoo in the Nest and it was first broadcast on the 25th of April, 1971. We now present another episode in a radio series based on the world-famous BBC comedy success, Steptoe and Son. With Wilfred Bramble as Albert and Harry H. Corbett as Harold. This week, Cuckoo in the Nest. Come on, hurry up. It's your move. Dead? Dead? Are you dead? I'm thinking. Well, it's your move, and you're in shit. I know, I know. Now, what do you think you're doing? I'm moving my queen. That's not your queen, that's my bishop. The salt cellar's my queen. <laughs> no, it's not. The pepper pot is your queen. I thought that was your queen. No, no, no. My queen is the bottle of Angostura bitters. <laughs> there it is. Now, if you move your thimble, you're in check. How can we play a proper game if you don't know what your pieces are? Have you been moving anything else of mine? Well, I don't, I don't know now. Is that egg cup yours? Yeah. Oh, well, I moved that. Twice. That's my king's rook. Oh, well, that's that, isn't it? You cocked up my Sicilian defence. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, there's no point in carrying on. I was trying out Novachensky's opening gambit from the World Championships. No wonder it won't come in off. Oh, it's no good. We'll have to get a proper set if we're going to play. I'll go. You set them up again and we'll give it another try. And don't eat any more of my pawns. Yeah. Good idea. Does Mr Albert Stepdow live here? Yes, yes, he does. So, the old fellow's still alive, then? Well, he's still alive, just. Good. <laughs> well, don't feel to stand here like a couple of raw prawns. Oh, oh, you better come in. Ta. Uh, here, in here. Fruit of a lounge. Dad, there's a gentleman here to see you. Hello, Dad. Who are you? You don't recognise me, do you? Well, it's not surprising. You haven't seen me for 45 years. I wasn't knee-high to an abbo's wife runs when I left. <laughs> I'm Arthur. Arthur? Arthur? Yeah, Arthur. Arthur? Arthur? Yeah. Arthur? <laughs> it can't be. Not Arthur. Arthur, yeah, Arthur! <laughs> Arthur? Harold, this is Arthur. <laughs> Is it? I don't believe it after all these years. Little Arthur. Yeah, there, Dad, don't get upset. Here, let's have a Captain Cooker, Jim. Girl, you're just the way Mum described you. A bit older, a bit smaller, <laughs> but I'd know you anywhere. <laughs> uh, excuse me, I, I'm... Oh, Harold, this is your brother. Oh, ha- my brother? <laughs> oh, I ain't got a brother. Yes, you have, son. Arthur. Arthur? Yeah, Arthur. He's your older brother. 
That'll be daft. It can't be. I'm an only child. I've always been an only child. Uh, Arthur's your stepbrother. A stepbrother? Yeah. Well, I met Arthur's mother before I met your mother. I see. And? Well, we were engaged for six years. And then one night, I couldn't control myself any longer. <laughs> And then after that, she went off me. I'm not surprised. <laughs> well, then, <coughs> Arthur came along, see. Uh, but she wouldn't marry me. She got into cricket club. She said marriage and athletics didn't mix. And then she got picked for the women's cricket team to Australia. Leg spinner she was. And I never saw her again. And then I, I met your mother and, and that was that. Oh, what a very nice story. That is very savoury. And how many more little bastards have you got spread around the world? <laughs> Don't you talk to me like that. Well, you certainly used to put yourself about, didn't you? You never told me you had another son. Well, it was a long time ago. I haven't seen him since he was two years old. I didn't even know if he was still alive. Well, I am. Alive and kicking. <laughs> so you're my kid brother, eh? Yes. Sights would appear. Well, <laughs> it's cause for a celebration. Does it? Yeah, let's break open a few tubes of Aussie lager. I brought some with me. I I'm told it's harder to find over here than an Arab at a bar mitzvah. <laughs> <laughs> Do that. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, now have a real drink. Well, here's to the Steptoe family. Long may it be reunited. To me, two sons. Come on, now, drink up. Cheers. Whoopee. Oh, cripes, I needed that. My mouth was as dry as a kangaroo's jockstrap. <laughs> oh, Arthur, there's so much I want to ask you, but first things first, where are you staying? Well, Pop, I'll tell you, I haven't as yet made any arrangements. I've only just fallen out of the flame and aeroplane. But I understand there's a million flop houses up around uh, Earl's Court, so I suppose I'll make me way up there and oh, have a look at... Oh, no, 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 son. You don't want to do that. Why not? He can stay here with us. Well, I got any room. Of course we have. We'll make room. You wouldn't want your brother living with strangers, would you? Yeah. <laughs> He's just arrived all the way from Australia. He can have your room. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. You, you can make a bed up down here. Down here? For the time being. That's very decent of you, Harold. I'm obliged to you. Oh, yeah, but... Well, that's settled then. Yeah, I must say it's good to be back in the old country, in the bosom of me family. A man needs roots. Roots? You're not staying, are you? I mean, long. It's a holiday. Well, I don't know, young Harold. I'm thinking of staying here for good now. I've been about a bit, you know. Done everything. Walkabout, sheep shearing, cattle driving, gold mining, pearl fishing. Ah, oh, marvellous. Yeah, it sounds much better than it is here. Bingo and telly, that's all we got. You'll be bored to tears here, especially when the rainy season starts. Rain? <laughs> love it, love it. When you've spent seven years on the outback without seeing a drop, you've got no idea how beautiful rain is. Uh, yep, I think this is the place for me. Well, excuse me, barging in like this. Oh, blimey, not another one. <laughs> how much longer are you keeping me out there? Stone the flame and crows, the taxi driver. I forgot all about you. Yeah, five pound ten, please. Five pound ten? Well, I turned the clock off when you got up. Yeah, maybe you did, but I think you turned it on when I left Melbourne. <laughs> Are you going to pay up or do I call the police? Uh, well, no, let's uh, keep the wallopers out of it. Five pound ten. Um, Harold, I uh, don't seem to have any uh, pommy money on me. I wonder if you'd mind paying Ned Kelly here for me. For five pound ten? I paid the man, Harold. Arthur will give it back to you. Oh, too right. Just as soon as I've changed me travellers' checks. Yeah, of course he will. Oh, here you are. Five pounds. Oh, thanks, Governor. Good morning. Thanks, Harold. Just put that on the slate. Ah, oh, it's marvellous to have you here, Arthur. Um, how's your mother? Oh, oh, it's very sad. Sorry to say the poor old lady passed on last month. Oh, dear. Oh, I'm very sorry. Yeah, a bit of a shock, really. She'd never been crook in her life. Active right up to the last. What happened to her? Well, she keeled over with a half-shaved merino ram between her legs. <laughs> New South Wales shearing championships it was. She would have won, too. 39 seconds and she only had the back legs left. Oh. <laughs> Great tragedy. 
A year's supply of swan lager she was on. Oh, not that it would have lasted her long, you understand. <laughs> here, 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 you want another if? Uh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah. Did she ever marry? Oh, no, not her. No. She shacked up with some eye tie plonk grower when I was seven, but he used to beat the bejesus out of her. Finally, one night he came home, stew to the gills. She smashed him across the back of the head with a quart jar of his vino reddo. She loaded up the Ford and we didn't stop for 300 miles. <laughs> My mother was a school teacher. A very lovely woman, very gentle. A lady she was, my mother. I don't believe a drop of alcohol ever passed her lips, did it, father? Oh, oh no, Harold. Not your mother. Salvation Army, she was. Yeah, that's right. It's a very pious lady. Well, well, well. <laughs> Funny how a fella can have two sheilas so different, ain't it, eh? <laughs> yeah. How very amusing. <laughs> well, uh... <clears throat> Now you come home, Arthur, we'd better start making plans for the future. What plans? Well, now he's going to stay with us. He's got to start thinking about work, hasn't he? Work? Yeah, what well, good idea. Yeah, I'll take you down the Labour Exchange first thing in the morning. They're digging a new tube tunnel and they do use a lot of Commonwealth labour. Oh, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> just, just wait a minute. I didn't come 12,000 miles to dig me way across flame in London. Oh, I'm so sorry. Perhaps you as a trade or a profession. Uh, well, well, no, not exactly. No. Uh, Neither of you. Well, I'm different. I don't need one. I have my own business. It's family business and Arthur's family. He's coming into the business. I'm going to make him a partner. That is a very handsome offer, Dad, which I am delighted to accept. No, 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 no. Look, I'm sweating my guts out building up this business. I'm not going to stand by here and watch a perfect stranger walking in here. He's not here. a perfect stranger. Hey, yes, Tom. Uh, he isn't to me. He's my son. My eldest son. I see. That's the way it is, huh? Right, well, I'm sure you have a lot to talk about, if you'll both excuse me. Oh. No, 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 leave him be, Pop. He'll be all right. Must be a bit of a shock to the young fella, me just turning up out of the blue. He's bound to be a bit jealous. Oh, I can't understand it. After all I've done for him. Ah, oh, well, you'll get over it. Give him time. Well, uh, I'm going up to me room to clean up. Oh, I'll just pop outside first and point Percy at the porcelain. <laughs> and then I'll tell you what I'm going to do. As it's my first day home, I'm going to take you and the young fellow up to town and I'm going to buy you both some slap-up tucker and a bonza frog calf. Oh, that'd be marvellous. <laughs> yeah, uh, there's uh, just one thing. Uh, I wonder if you could see your way clear to lending me a few quid. Uh, just till I cash me traveller's checks, you understand. Yeah, of course, son. Anything you want. A five, ten? Better make it twenty. Uh, uh, no, I'll, I'll tell you what. Make it uh, round fifty. Uh, then I won't have to keep coming back to you. Fifty it is. Yeah, thanks, Pop. <laughs> oh, it's so good to see you again, son. You don't know what this means to me, having both me sons around me. You've made an old man very happy. Well, it's great to be home again, Pop. Oh, oh, by the way, I've got a little present for you. Have you? Oh, how oh, lovely. Just what I've always wanted. A boomerang. <laughs> Why are you doing? Eh? Oh, it's very nice. You've painted that well. It's on the gates now, is it? The whole world can see it now. Steptoe and Sons. It's official now, is it? He's rowed himself in. He's agreed to join the firm? Yes. I don't suppose he needed much persuading. Harold, I can't understand you. Why are you taking this attitude? Why do you resent him? He's your brother. How do you know? How can you be sure? It could be anybody. It says he's your son and you believe it. You're so gullible. Ah, oh, he's me son, all right. All them photographs he's shown me, him and his mother, and the things he's told me. Ah, oh, yes, he's me son, all right. He's got my ears. And me nose. And your money. 
Where is he now? He's in bed. I just took his breakfast up. You see? You never brought me breakfast in bed in my life. Well, it makes me sick the way you run round after him. I don't run round after him. Well, get him up. If he's a partner, let him do his full share. He can help me turn his cart round for a start. Come on, get him up. He, he can't get up. He's not well. It, it's our weather. It's playing up his old war wound. Oh, he's got a war wound as well, has he? He runs in a family, doesn't it? <laughs> Nobody can do any work round here except me. He was a prisoner of war in the Japanese. And I bet they were glad to get rid of him and all. <laughs> he certainly ain't seen the rising sun since he's been here. You're very bitter, Harold. Yes, oh, I, oh, I, I am bitter. I'm resentful. I'm jealous. I'm all of these things. Because I think it's diabolical that a man can work as hard as I do and see it given away like this. So someone who hasn't even put a thing into the firm. Yeah, that's where you're wrong. He has. He's put his shares up in Luke Capital. Shares? What shares? He's invested all his money in an Australian nickel mine. You've heard of Poseidon. They got shares in there? No, the one next door to it. <laughs> Poseidon reef runs right under his land. Oh, my God. Oh, he's got the lot there. Nickel, gold, opals, tin, steel. Red pudding, marmalade. <laughs> you daft pillock. <laughs> you can't have steel mines. You make steel. Dad, he's a con man. He's a ponce. You don't like him, do you? <laughs> no, I don't. They never give me no boomerang. That seconds me to see the way you have been taken in by him. You think the sun shines out of his ear holes? <laughs> I don't exist anymore, as far as you're concerned. Well, it's natural for man to have a deep affection for his firstborn. Right. And you favour him if you want to. But I'm warning you, I'm not going to stand by and see everything that I've worked for ended on a plate to one of your illegitimate sprogs. <laughs> There's enough for all of us. Oh, where? Show me. Go on, show me, show me. Show me where. And how many more is going to turn up once the word gets around? None. There's, there's only you and Arthur. That's you know of. I mean, the way you move around, God knows how many more there are. Me? Yeah, you. Oh, you've told me often enough when you've been in your cups. All the birds you used to have in your young days. You're a one-man population explosion. <laughs> I, bet, I bet you sired more offsprings than an Aberdeen Angus. <laughs> yeah, you ought to be on a stud farm with a big rosette stuck behind your ear hole. Ain't you'd have them all in the firm, wouldn't you, eh? We'll finish up with a bigger board than ICI's got. Oh, we, we won't. There'll just be you and, and me and Arthur. You're being very childish. You know it makes sense. Arthur's just the sort of man we need in this firm. We've never had a good financial brain running the business. Thank you very much. <laughs> I've managed perfectly well up to now. I'm not blaming you. You do your best you can. Uh, it's just that Arthur's more, uh, well, uh, he's had a much better education than you have. Everybody's had a better education than I've had. <laughs> I used to spend more time in the Austin cart than I did in school. Well, you didn't like school. You was always up in the wag. That is no reason for not sending me. You should have made me go. I couldn't. You were too big. <laughs> you were heavier than me when you was 11. I tried to make you go to school, but you kept threatening to wallop me. <laughs> wallop you? When I was 11? Yeah. I was frightened of you. I couldn't control you. I tried to get you into Borstal, but they wouldn't have you. <laughs> Again, thank you very much. <coughs> oh, 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 what an idyllic childhood I did have. Well, it's true. It is not true. I never had a chance. I was so far behind at school, it was humiliating. Three years running, I was kept back. Fourteen when I left school. I was the only bloke in the class in long trousers. <laughs> I must be the only man around here who left school while I was still in the juniors. <laughs> if I hadn't gone into the army, I still wouldn't have been able to read and write. You crippled my mind, you did. And now you're holding it against me. I could have been a doctor. Or a band leader or something. <laughs> I always liked music. You never helped me there, neither did you, eh? That teacher said I was musically inclined, and you ought to encourage me. But you wouldn't buy me a piano, would you? 
I taught me how to whistle instead. <laughs> I got you that piano off the round. There was 32 notes missing. <laughs> I couldn't even play chopsticks on it. And the lid kept falling down on me fingers. Clunk. Aversion therapy, they calls that today. <laughs> no, mate, I never stood a chance. Doomed I was from the day I was born. You neglected me. God blimey, Harold Wilson would have been sitting on an awesome cart if it had you for a father. You can't blame me for your own shortcomings. I never knew you wanted to be a band leader. You never bothered to find out, did you? You just weren't interested. That's what I can't forgive. You're more concerned with yourself than in my future. And now what little I've managed to build up for myself, you expect me to share with him. Well, I'm... I'm sorry, Dad, it's, it's not on. You're going to have to choose. Me or him? Uh, that's not fair. You can't ask a man to choose between his sons. Not just like that. Yes, I can. It's very simple. Either he goes or I go. Why can't we all stay together? No, no, one or the other. Go on, Mark, have your mind. I can't, Harold. What? Right, I'm off. No, Harold. No, no, I'm sorry, but that's the way it is. I would have gone before, but I've always had you to look after. Well, that's changed now. Hey, it's his turn. I've had you for 40 years. Now he can have a go. Ah, good luck to you. And what about the business? Let him run it. If you can get him up, that is. <laughs> no, no, you can't go. Harold, not now. It's time to go out on the round. I've completed my last round for this firm. Well, who's going to do it? May I suggest you go into the house and turf Wallaby Jim of the Islands out of bed? <laughs> Give him a map, put him on the cart and let him get on with it. What? 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 He won't be able to drive that horse. You know she won't go out with anyone else but you. Nobody else can handle her. Then I suggest he sells off a few of his nickel shares and buys himself a kangaroo. <laughs> I'm sure he'll be home in one of them. He'll be able to hop round in no time. Goodbye. Harold, no, don't go. Come back. Yeah. He'll be back. <laughs> Ah, shut up! <laughs> uh, hello, Dad. Oh, what a lovely morning. Afternoon. Yeah. Oh, 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 the old war wound's still playing me up, Dad. Oh, oh, I know now how you must feel. Oh. Still, perhaps in a few days I might be able to start giving young Harold a bit of a hand round the station. He's now, gone. Gone? Gone where? He walked out. Oh, that's a blow. Still, he'll be back when his old gut starts rumbling. <laughs> By the way, Dad, I uh, I wonder if you could uh, lend me another fire, but there's a horse running at Kempton Park. This yeah, afternoon. and there's one in the stables rearing to go as well. Hey, eh? Get your finger out. <laughs> Whoa! Hello, Lenny. How's it going? Uh, not so bad. How do you like being out on the cart after all these years? Oh, I'm too old for this game now, Lenny. Uh, when I'm up, I can't get down. When I'm down, I can't get up. Uh, have you seen Harold lately? Not for three weeks. Y you know, he's set up on his own. Yeah, yeah. I saw him pushing his hand cart last week. And cart. And he got a horse? No. But he didn't look well. He's lost a lot of weight. He didn't seem too keen on me seeing him. Pride, I suppose. Why don't you two get back together? I'd love to, Lenny, but I don't know where he's living. Oh, I do. He's got a room in Paddington. Cairo Road. God, it's the right sort of dot house. Oh, I've got the number here somewhere. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> I never left that door open. Hello? What's it doing there? Hello, son. The landlady let me in. I've been looking for you for three weeks now. Oh, yes? Lenny Jenkins told me where you was living. 
I put a shilling to the gas meter. Oh, good. Oh, there's no need. Thank you very much. I'm quite capable of providing my own eating. Oh, well, what brings you into this neck of the woods? Oh, I was worried about you. I hadn't heard of you, and I was wondering how you was getting along. Oh, I'm very well, thank you. I'm doing nicely. You're not going to stay in this place, then? How oh, good heavens, no. Oh, now, this is just temporary accommodation until I find something more suitable. I've seen a quite nice little muse cottage that I'm thinking of renting. <laughs> I'll say, would you excuse me while I make my tea? Would you care for some toast? You've only got two slices of bread. Yes, well, I'm offering you one. No, no, that's all right. I've already had a big dinner. Uh, so you, you're doing well, then? Oh, yes. I can't complain. <laughs> Business is coming along very nicely. You've got yourself a horse and cart, then? Oh, yeah. I'm very pleased with it. It's a four-year-old horse. Seventeen hands. Beautiful animal. I'm particularly pleased with the cart. It's brand new. Bigger than yours, of course. But I've had to have it to handle the volume of trade, what I'm doing. Ah, oh, good. <coughs> mm. Aren't you going to put any jam on your toast? You always have jam with it. I ain't got any... Uh, I, I'm on a diet. He says, oh, I've given up, Jam. Our businessmen eat far too much, you know. And digging their grave with their own teeth, as my specialist puts it. <laughs> Harold. Yes? Come back, Harold. Please. Oh, I think we've had all that out. Oh, I don't see the advantage of discussing it any further. I need you, Harold. <clears throat> the business needs you. I'm sure your new managing director can look after the business. He's gone. He gone. He's opted. Gone to Australia, I think. You were right, Harold. He was a ponce, a lazy, no good con man. I told you he was. When a bloke like him wouldn't take the awesome cart out. Oh, he took it out, all right. The only trouble was he didn't bring it back. <laughs> he flogged it. I had to go out and buy it back. I haven't seen him since. Well, what did you expect? Come back, Harold. I, I can't manage on my own. Oh, oh, no, I, I don't know. I mean, I'd like to help you, really, I would, but... Oh, it's going to be very difficult to entangle all my financial affairs. I mean, there's all my commitments to the wholesalers. There's a lot of people relying on me. Yeah, I realise. I couldn't ask it to close down just like that. I thought we could put it on a proper business footing, a merger between your firm and mine. Uh, we could call it Steptoe and Steptoe. You mean a reverse takeover? Do I? Yes. I, it's quite a common arrangement. When a smaller firm appears to merge with a larger firm, but in effect takes it over with a view to getting the stock exchange quote. Yes. That's interesting. I must admit. I suppose we could enter into exploratory dialogue. Of course, my accountants would have to go into your books. I mean, I must be guided by them. Oh, of course. I mean, the assets of the two companies would have to be fully analysed as to... Blimey. That shilling didn't last long. <laughs> She's got that well rigged. I haven't got any more shillings. Oh. Well, I only carry notes. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'll tell you what, Harold. Let's carry on the uh, explanatory talks around home. The fire's on. I banked it up before I come out. Well, of course, psychologically, I would be at a disadvantage talking to you on your home ground. I've got steak and kidney pudding in the oven. I oh, know. Have you? <laughs> and a, a sherry trifle and an upside-down cake. Oh, yeah. I've got some jam as well. Oh, well, I suppose the venue of the talks doesn't really have any bearing on the eventual outcome. Yes, yes, all right. I'll concede the point. Good. Shall we go now? Uh, you do realise this is just exploratory talks. I mean, my loss of freedom must be considered yeah. in the eventual financial mm. assessment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. C uh, come on, then. Oh, well, let's get out of this rat hole. Come on. You've been listening to Wilfred Bramble and Harry H. Corbett as Steptoe and Son, with Kenneth J. Warren as Arthur. 
Other parts were played by David Brierley, written and adapted for radio by Ray Galton and Alan Simpson, and produced by Bobby J. Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed our latest episode of Step to and Son, and of course, as usual, on a Saturday, it's another adventure with yours truly, Johnny Dollar, going live at 5 p.m. GMT. You can email me on brett at tourdate.co.uk, and you can check out our social media, all under the name of Brett's Old Time Radio Show. Thanks for listening. I'll be with you seven days a week, each and every week, and I'm going to catch up with you tomorrow on Brett's Old Time Radio Show. Love you. Bye. <laughs>